my relationship is so healthy when it comes to like decision making literally every choice we've ever made has been like something mm -hmm. that we're a hundred percent like on and we make the decision together we've never done anything that it hasn't been like a hundred percent agreed upon now that this sh all this uh this stupid events done with i can focus on uh my pat my true passions <laughs> making content cops i never would have dreamed that we'd do something like this. Yeah. Boxing, it's strange. I at least thought that we would have done it for money. We have not earned money for the past two years, which makes taxes very easy. Hey, That's good. Nice. <laughs> it with me every time I think about it, I'm like, I don't, I don't box. What the hell is this? We make the decision together. I'm not going to lie, Ethan, I go to your subreddit all the time for like a, a break from the insanity it's like the only sane place on the internet i swear to god but... i think there's a fear of intelligence i get it we have different opinions it's not going to change clearly i'm too stupid to understand no, what you're no. saying uh like like they really value their intelligence mm, so, so they, they can't be wrong mm, yes yeah. yeah you're you're sitting there lecturing me essentially like i feel like i'm back in the worst class that i've ever been okay, in my well, life uh, we recently uh had a boundary walked over it, it feels very similar to being cheated on to be honest you guys do need to be making money though you understand that right <laughs> <laughs> i at least thought that we would have done it for money i think like honestly like young male audiences are the f worst audiences on the planet uh by far i don't know I, i've been doing a lot of growing over the you know these i don't know my career on youtube so it's been uh, I don't know, it's been... Some men definitely, like, I mean, Ian is definitely one of those men where, like, you can tell he just, like, literally does not give a shit mm -hmm. at all. Uh, I try to get him to give a shit. So for Ian, for example, like, I would say Trashy or Trailer Park would be one. Um, <laughs> like, uh, untucked or, like, a bit unorganized and, like, simple. A real relationship is a wrestling match. It's a grappling it's a grappling phenomena that you both emerge transformed from. And that's what people want. They don't want to push over. Not, not unless there's something wrong with them. You know, a narcissistic person who never wants to be challenged will want a partner who does nothing but deliver exactly what they're told to deliver. But they will mistreat them beyond belief. My biggest, in I mean, there's like some days where I ask Ian, like, have I ruined your life? Like, I feel like some, because you get so many messages yeah. where like you have to think about it. Anissa Joma, the sneaky snake of YouTube. This is how Anissa used to describe herself several years ago in her Twitter bio. Perhaps she realized broadcasting her snake-like intentions was not the greatest idea, but the label of sneaky snake still fits quite well. The drama surrounding Creator Clash 2 has turned a lot of people against her, and rightfully so. While cutting Froggy fresh from the fight is reason enough for people to get upset, looking at the grand scheme of things regarding Anissa paints an even darker picture. Let's start with Anissa vague interpretation of Froggy Fresh training with Sam Hyde. The way that Cutie talked about it, she seemed really hurt and like distraught. And even in her tweets, like she's not usually an angry person. No. And she was angry. Like she was angry that like this person would break her trust. For context, they're talking about Justin Minx drinking at the Streamer Awards. QTC, the person who runs the Streamer Awards, has had a rather tumultuous relationship with Justin Minx. QTC allowed Justin Minx to attend the award show under the sole condition that she doesn't drink. Justin Minx not only wound up drinking, but completely ruined the after party, cutting the party very short and apparently costing QTC 50 grand. Anissa tries to draw a parallel here, but in a very unclear way. Having a boundary walked over is a very painful yeah. experience. We recently uh, had a boundary walked over. It, it feels very similar to being cheated on, to be honest, where it's mm -hmm. like, what did I do to you to deserve this type mm -hmm. of like treatment? Like, I'm not mm -hmm. asking for much. Since she doesn't provide any more details, I'm operating off assumption here. But the context of talking about creator events and the timing of this definitely points to the Froggy Fresh drama. This Twitch VOD was dated March 13th. Sam Hyde retweeted Froggy Fresh on March 11th and a couple times after that. After Creator Clash posted their quote unquote clarification as to why Froggy Fresh was removed from the event, Froggy Fresh retweets saying, are you talking about when Ian called me the third time ever 15 minutes after Sam Hyde retweeted me? So the drama was already in motion before this live stream took place. 
I don't know what other boundary crossing Anissa could be referring to here, but my lord, comparing this to Justamix at the streamer awards or being cheated on is just pathetic. If you can't handle one of your fighters being retweeted by somebody you don't like, then you're in the wrong business. And just to clarify, this live stream took place on March 13th, well before Anissa's mom got involved or anything like that. She's literally comparing a retweet to getting cheated on. Who knows, maybe she was talking about something else, but it's not my fault she's as vague as possible. Vagueness definitely being a theme of how she handled the Froggy Fresh fallout. Mm -hmm. When you work with people, you have to accept that you're inviting chaos and you can like watch the chaos and like try and guide it softly as much as you can but like when you when you try to like grab onto it and control it you're you're only asking for like pain on your end and pain for like the event yeah. um and sometimes you really do have to make the call of like i have to take my hands completely off and mm -hmm. just like accept that I'm working with unpredictable people. A hands-off approach is the exact opposite of the way they dealt with the Froggy Fresh drama. And while organizing an event like this requires you to work with unpredictable people, Anissa doesn't like unpredictable people. I don't like unpredictable people, period. I just don't. But she recognizes chaos is an inherent part of running an event like this. It's strange she understands the damage that kicking Froggy can cause to the event, and then they do it anyway. Not only is this misuse of foresight strange, but it's also hypocritical. Train feels very actually sentient, like it's there, but he 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 actively ignores the sentience. It feels like he lives in this world of like cognitive dissonance, but yeah. it's. Uh, what's the term? Inconvenient for him. That's what I mean. Mm. And like, does that make it worse than someone who is just mush, right? Like Aiden Ross mm. feels a little mush Like right he's now. aware of what he yeah. does. Yeah. So Anissa understands that she's running an event full of content creators, a clash of creators, and she's aware that the best approach she can take to the drama surrounding the event is to let hype build organically. Comparing her actions to her words, it seems like she's living in this world of cognitive dissonance. But if other people are being unpredictable or inconsistent, then she calls them out. She seems to have a habit of holding other people to a much higher standard than she holds herself. This person hurt me, and I'm not going to assume that it was intentional. And I am mm. going to be open to a conversation. That, like, idea... Because you go into fight or flight. You're, like, um, especially in relationships for me. I thought I was dying. Somebody does something or they say something <clears throat> that really means nothing, and you take it a certain way. You villainize them to the point where, like, it doesn't matter what they say. It, it, there's no fixing it. So it's really hard to have somebody that kind of balances you or like is there to tell you what's up because as soon as like you've decided that they're no good, like that's it. Turning disagreements into villainizing fight or flight scenarios is incredibly manipulative. She talks about this as if it's an issue she's gotten over. But if that were the case, unpredictable people, aka people with their own free will, wouldn't intimidate her so much. If she really understood that villainizing people due to a small slight was a bad thing to do, especially with people you're working with, then Froggy would have gotten to fight. We wind up with a reaction that's either highly manipulative, highly emotional, or both. And I don't think anybody was expecting Froggy to get cut over Twitter drama, so it's also unpredictable. I don't like unpredictable people, period. I just don't. One thing that surprises me about Creator Clash is that, according to Ian and Denisa, they're not making any money off it. You guys do need to be making money, though. You understand that, right? <laughs> Boxing? It's strange. I at least thought that we would have done it for money. We have not earned money for the past two years, which makes taxes very easy. Hey, That's good. Nice. <laughs> First of all, Ian's attitude towards the event not making money and the event as a whole seems rather inconsistent. At some points, he laughs off the idea of making money off of Creator Clash, and at other points he seems confused as to why he's boxing in the first place. Here, he talks about why he cried after the fight, and I'll play that clip for context as well. Ah, oh, that shit's hard. Um... Yeah, I, I, I really appreciate everyone. Uh, you know, I'm not, I know I'm not everyone's cup of tea, but I, I really do uh, appreciate the support and um, 
uh, you know, thank you for coming. They were interviewing you, uh, and uh, you seemed a little bit speechless, a little bit emotional. What was going through your head? Uh, I mean, it, it's it's kind of weird and vague because it's like just a lot of different feelings. Uh, obviously, one is like relief that this whole thing's over. Two, it's just been me, you know, grinding really hard, not focusing on, uh, you know, I, I I'm gonna be honest. I don't love boxing. <laughs> Uh, it's, I, I find it to be very challenging and very difficult to do. When he says, grinding really hard, not focusing on, and then trails off, he's most likely talking about making videos. Do you want to get into what's next? What other plans you have outside of Creator Clash? Do you want to tease anything? I love making videos, and I don't want to, like, stop making videos, but continuing to box and make videos is so hard. So I definitely need to, like, choose one or the other. The last notable video he made was getting away with it, and that was over a year ago, and the footage was recorded almost two years ago now. The document, it hasn't come out. He's, it's like, uh, almost a year. When was that? Six months ago? Eight months ago? I'd say eight, nine months ago. Eight or nine, eight or nine months ago, we, sh we shot that footage, and, um... So did Idubs really derail his career for a year or two just to prove rice gum wrong? Or is this what Anissa wanted for Ian? Boxing promoter married to a boxer, month seven of me boxing, a pin tweet from a year ago. And while Ian and Anissa claim they're not taking a pay cut, they certainly pay their fighters handsomely. All net profits are going to charity, meaning that only once the revenue from Creator Clash passes the threshold to break even for whatever they paid the creators to fight, as well as any other operational costs, only then any extra money will go to the charities, which is cool. I think they should be paid for their work, but then they would be raising money for charity in addition to getting paid to fight rather than what they are implying, which is that they are fighting only for charity. If the sole purpose was to raise money for charity, there are a lot easier ways to do it, especially if you're in the position of somebody like iDubs. So what am I getting at? This may sound far-fetched, but I believe this is Anissa's attempt to ingratiate herself with the most popular popular creators. I mean, why else? It definitely doesn't seem like this was done out of Ian's interest. Anissa's take on Casa Net not showing up to the streamer awards points to this in a way. I also feel like it really is like quite hurtful and it's like, I feel like there's almost some ego there that everyone else is yep. seeing. Like, I can't imagine planning an event and then the last award to celebrate the streamer of the year doesn't even show up. Doesn't he not uh, involve himself in the streaming community? I feel like he, like, has separated... He's, like, said that he doesn't like the Poggers community specifically. Like, he's mm -hmm. not into the... Mm-hmm. Yeah. See, that's what... The Poggers community is a loose and informal creator clique of English-speaking Twitch streamers and YouTube streamers who regularly collaborate on each other's live streams and videos and heavily share audiences and communities. The most popular streamers in the clique are XQC, Asmongold, Jayschlat, Hassan, Ludwig, Mizkif, Moist Critical, Soda Poppin, Pokimane, and Austin Show. So the largest friendship nepotism clique on the internet. I think Casanet is pretty smart for not wanting to associate with them. I mean, how much longer longer can the Poggers community keep up the being creatively bankrupt is so quirky shtick. Every year we see innovation from just chatting streamers as they push boundaries and ask the question, how can we do even less? So you can look forward to a bright 2023 of me watching YouTube videos, uh, reading Reddit posts, and then also reading YouTube comments after I watch the YouTube video. I'll be honest, 95% of my streams, I look at what someone else did, I had a small little twist, and then I steal that sh it makes sense to me as to why Anissa would want to get chummy with this group and why she would roll her eyes at Casanet for not wanting to associate with them. Out of all of Anissa's content that I've seen, I've never been impressed once. If she can get in with a group where association is more important than creativity, that would be a great boon to her career. And if you can't get into the Poggers community through talent, then just buy your way in. Just throw money at some of the most popular creators to get involved with your event without regard of profit. And if it doesn't work, what does Anissa care? It's Ian's money after all. Well, yeah, you we guys... just know that we're very like we're very aware that we're we're fine and we we can do this for a few years without taking any sort of salary. But so. don't. Why would you do that? I saw. I want you to. I want you guys to just take care of yourselves. Yeah, yeah. Well, we we are taken care of. We're good. Mm -hmm. We're smart. We're adults. Yeah, but why are you so... going to dig into your uh, whatever? Okay.
This raises the question, how and why is Ian okay with this? Why would he abandon his passion of making videos to do something he doesn't really seem to care about? Why does he show such a lack of pushback and spine? Well, to answer these questions, we're gonna have to psychoanalyze Ian and Anissa's marriage. Uh, you don't see that as... It's not gonna get settled, man. I- you know what? The, well, the truth not is- actually, Well, no, look, you're not coming up with any counter-arguments, and you're just saying I'm not making any sense. So you, I want an explanation for why I'm not making any sense. feels like you're projecting. I didn't say you're not making any sense. I said that you're twisting a lot of what I'm saying. Then in, correct me. Really then correct be. me. I'm interested in having a, like, an you're honest conversation about this, this but you're not correcting me. That is the second biggest lie. You've, you've no, said- No, not. So prove I'm lying. How am I lying? So, uh, again, prove that I'm actually twisting around what you're saying, and, and you're, you're not- talking. Again, you're not giving examples. You're just claiming that I'm doing this. The, the, I mean, the word fallacy has been brought up a million times. That's because you've made appeal to popularity fallacies and appeal, appeal to, to nature fallacies. That's why- again, I- I get it. We have different opinions. It's not gonna change. Clearly, I'm too stupid to understand no, what you're no. saying. No. This is from a debate with Vegan Gains from November of 2018. I know that's from a while ago, but I think this is an important jumping off point. She seems incapable of hashing out this argument without resorting to emotional manipulation. And this is how she conducts herself publicly. If this is how vile she was with public disagreements, I can't imagine how she handled private disagreements. It makes sense that iDubs would learn how to outright avoid this behavior instead of ever actually confronting her. Discord screenshots from 2017 show her dissatisfaction with the relationship. What sticks out the most to me is when she said, I didn't want to fix him, showing her desire to change iDubs. In a normal relationship, if things aren't working out due to differences, you either reconcile, compromise, or break up. Manipulating your partner into becoming the person you want them to be isn't a proper option. The person that you can completely map and who only does positive things for you, it's like A, you don't know that person. B, they're not communicating with you, nor you with them. Maybe they're just subordinating themselves to you or you to them. You want a partner who you can openly and honestly hash out your disagreements with, not a partner who starts throwing a hissy fit at the slightest sign of a disagreement. So it's really hard to have somebody that kind of balances you or like is there to tell you what's up because as soon as like you've decided that they're no good, like that's it. My biggest, in I mean, there's like some days where I ask Ian, like, have I ruined your life? Like, I feel like some, because you get so many messages. Yeah. Where, like, you have to think about it. Because you go into fight or flight. You're, like, um, especially in relationships for me. I thought I was dying. Anissa going into fight or flight over disagreements would explain Ian's spinelessness. Being in a relationship with Anissa probably feels like the longest game of walking on eggshells ever. What does the optimal relationship look like in terms of positive and negative emotion? You might say, well, utopia. Nothing but positive interactions. It's like, no, I don't want to push over. Not, not unless there's something wrong with them. You know, a narcissistic person who never wants to be challenged will want a partner who does nothing but deliver exactly what they're told to deliver, but they will mistreat them beyond belief. My relationship is so healthy when it comes to like decision making. Literally every choice we've ever made has been like something mm -hmm. that we're a hundred percent like on and we make the decision together. We've never done anything that it hasn't been like a hundred percent agreed upon and I mean, that's just the way to live life. Anissa's behavior would also explain Ian's dissociation habits. You know, that's what some people would call meditation. Yeah. When you're in that kind of state of overexertion while clearing your mind. Oh, no, no, not overexertion. Oh. I love to just check out Oh. just randomly. Oh. Maybe like when I'm driving. Oh, maybe. that's called dissociation. That's a different thing. Yeah. That's not <laughs> okay. meditation. Yeah, yeah, I love doing that. <laughs> For those who think I'm getting too personal or too invasive, I must ask, how is what I'm doing any different from the way people are treating the Steven Crowder divorce? Uh, Steve got a divorce. Now, you might wonder, to what extent is this political news? The answer to this is, it's very funny. <laughs> how is this any different from the way people treated the Johnny Depp Amber Heard trial? Okay, here we go. It's haunting Amber Heard that she has a borderline personality disorder. I was made aware of that in the Johnny's case, yes. a smart guy. So you, did, is Actually, that one of the audience? Not necessarily haunting, true. but I do recall. Good, you called it, man. Yeah, hey, hey, you least. called it. I am merely following the precedent set by groups like the Poggers community. Now on to Anissa's naive take on gambling and adult content. 
I just assume like they don't have like a lot of money to spend on. I don't know. That's the saddest part though is like it's just getting people into debt and a lot of them like online gambling is such a problem. I agree that gambling definitely has its problems, but her take on gambling is followed by her take on adult entertainment and it's incredibly inconsistent. It's the same with like fans, like people being mad about fans but not hub, right? Like, mm -hmm. I mean, now they've moved the goalposts to like bad. I've seen a lot of like these like radicalized. You're um, right though, they are starting with this whole like. It's bad, just like Aiden was on about, because yep. it's some Andrew Tate shit, isn't it? Yes. No, it's not an Andrew Tate thing. Jesus Christ. The accessibility of adult content to minors has skyrocketed. Since this is a rather recent trend, we're only just starting to understand the negative impacts. And for someone like Anissa, who is concerned about how young men and boys treat women, and as a creator of adult content herself, this is something she should definitely look into. But th there, uh, there, there's an increase in... In, in young people. Really? Uh, I haven't women. heard that. That's... Yeah. I haven't heard this at all. 24% increase, and that was before Roe v. Wade. So these numbers are coming in before that happened. Um, young women are more depressed. Uh, so clearly the system is not working for anyone. Some of the common damaging effects of adult content for users can include addiction, isolation, increased aggression, distorted beliefs and perceptions about relationships and intimacy, negative feelings about themselves, and neglecting other areas of their lives. Both user and partner experience lower relationship satisfaction and stability, less positive communication, and more psychological aggression between partners. What are the effects on teen psychology? A warped view of relationships and intimacy, distorted body image, desensitization to violence, angry outbursts, the kinds of things that would lead to the problems that Anissa was talking about. But no, people aren't concerned about that, this is just an Andrew Tate thing. I do have to agree though, this system isn't working for anyone. The system of convincing young women to sell themselves online as a consumer product under the guise of empowerment isn't working. And it's like, we, we all know here that like, those girls like, don't have like, a 12 year old audience. Like I'm sure there's like some curious like no, boys that go in there every watch. once in a while. Canadian researcher Simon Lajeunesse found that most boys seek by age 10, driven by a brain that is suddenly fascinated by But hey, I guess this is just my bigoted attempt at reverting back to purity culture. They're going back to purity culture. Like we're reverting further and further back into like this like, I think they're trying to get back to this time period where they felt like they were in more control overall, right? Which is like this purity, Christian, like mm. uh, saving yourself for your partner or whatever the like rots your brain or whatever the argument is. If she was against reverting back to purity culture, then what's her problem with gambling? Oh, the people who are concerned about gambling are just Christians trying to revert back to purity culture back when they had more power. Who knows, I'm probably just concern trolling. The worst is like, concern trolling oh it's god so mm. oh my god the it's worst. so pathetic it's yeah. it's Plus, if Anissa was really concerned with her body dysmorphia and how her mental health and hypochondria affects her husband, then she wouldn't be constantly flaunting herself online. That's one of the worst things you can do for your mental health if you genuinely have body dysmorphia. But instead, she imposes her distorted beauty standards onto Ian, and in a very disrespectful way. Here she's using three key words to describe Ian's fashion. So for Ian, for example, like, I would say trashy or trailer park would be one. Um, like, uh, untucked or, like, a bit unorganized and, like, simple, right? White. Well, that goes with trailer trash. Oh, okay. Um, but, like, but, like, there's three descriptors that he kind of always likes to follow. He likes, like, um, it's a bit unkempt looking, but it's simple. He keeps it pretty simple. He'll have, like, one statement piece, maybe, like that shirt. Um, and it always has the theme of, like, trailer park or kind of just, like... <laughs> Yeah, that's Do his I vibe. identify with the trailer parks, Ian? Yeah. Mm. Mm. <laughs> <laughs> Unpack <Beautiful>. that. <laughs> yeah, go ahead. <laughs> yeah, it, yeah, trailer parks are cool. Yeah. They're, uh, that's affordable housing. Yeah, Ian seems very thrilled with those descriptors and very invested in his own fashion. Maybe if she didn't put so much stock into appearance, she wouldn't have these body image problems that she claims to have. So, what's next for iDubs? Well, on the H3 podcast, he teases an upcoming content cop. And at this point, it's like, 
Why? Oh, do you want to hint at maybe what else you're going to do on your main channel? Uh, you don't have to say who it's yes, about. Yes, uh, on my main channel, I'm going to be addressing controversies, and I'm going to be putting out a... I'm going to put, be putting out a content cop. Yeah, yes! Oh, let's oh, go, go right. baby! A thought, content dude. cop about controversy, related to controversies? That might be nah. nah. No, no, that might that's be true. Yeah, yeah, sure. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Wow. It's a content. I am. This is a very vague uh, tease. This isn't the only time during this podcast when Anissa seems to be leading Ian along in terms of what he should say. She could just be politely reminding him of what to say and to stay on track, but she comes off as his handler. More importantly, he gives enough information for Ethan to make an educated guess. Content caught your old self, dude. All right. Thank you, guys. Uh, appreciate it. Nice to see y'all. Whether Ethan was joking or not doesn't really matter. Considering their reaction to that remark and where iDubbbz is at in his career, I think it's quite possible that iDubbbz makes a content cop on himself. Here's the problem. Other people are already making content cops and takedowns of Ian, myself included. Do we really need iDubbbz to tell us the reasons as to why we shouldn't like iDubbbz? The YouTube community is already doing a pretty good job at navigating this on their own. Perhaps Anissa and Ian should listen more carefully to Anissa's horror horoscope. I can't control the things around me, and the more I try, the worse it will get. I, I was just gonna add, you were also very, like, the the untouchable mm -hmm. iDubs that, like, people, you never given them anything. Mm -hmm. You were always very careful, and you knew how to conduct yourself, and you were putting these videos that, like, like you said, looking back at it, it's kind of like a hit piece, mm -hmm. but you didn't give them any info about yourself. Idubs putting more of himself out there is fine. I really couldn't have cared less when the OF drama first happened. What disgusts me is how desperately they try to control the narrative surrounding their image. It's like they've been in damage control mode ever since the OF drama, and especially after the Sam Hyde documentary. And that goes doubly for Anissa. I would like to shout out Brittany Vinti. If it weren't for her first video on Anissa, I probably wouldn't have made this in the first place. Anissa describing herself as a sneaky snake in her Twitter bio all those years back was the catalyst for this project. After all, the saying goes, once a snake, always a snake. All right, that's gonna have to do it for this one. Shout out to the best subscriber squad in all of YouTube. I hope everyone has a wonderful day. I would not be the stable person that I am 